Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Ben W, the video series where I get to tackle one question every trip I take from my parked car to my office in Denver Public Schools. Uh, today's question comes from Sherry Edwards where she asks, um, how to get started with blended learning as a traditional classroom teacher. Now, I can only really speak to my own experience with uh, getting started uh, integrating technology and then looking at blended learning, um, which I sort of define as uh, learning, but using all of the tools at your disposal, um, both online and offline tools. And so, I can really only speak to my own experience, but I do have some suggestions. So if you're trying to get started with blended learning, um, the first thing to do is to actually become a blended learner. Um, because essentially if you're trying to teach others in a way that you have never learned, it's going to be very, very difficult. And so I suggest to any teacher that is trying to get started with blended learning that they very simply subscribe to some podcasts and start reading a few blogs. Start looking at a couple of uh, you know news aggregation sites um, for for blended learning like Ed Surge, um, you know, or things like that. But at the very least, you need to find a couple of mentors who have uh, been doing this a while and who are talking about it, and you need to. Um, you need to become a blended learner in order to really create a, a blended learning environment in, in your classroom. Um, I would highly recommend, um, you know, a number of uh, podcasts that you, you can download and just subscribe to and every single week uh, you get new content. Um, I find that uh, actually the Ed Search podcast is really nice. Um, I really like uh, Horizontal Transfer um, is a new podcast I've been listening to a bunch. Um, I also really like the Classroom Questions podcast uh, and the, um, what's another one that's really good? Uh, Portland, not Portlandia. <laughs> Portlandia is the name of the, of the show. Techlandia is the name of the podcast. Um, and so I like all of those, um, mostly because they model blended learning really well, and they have some really great entry points. So along with sort of becoming a blended learner in order to create a blended learning environment in your classroom, I also would highly recommend simply starting with putting things uh, online. So what I mean by that is you have those brick and mortar or um, sort of tactile handouts that you would typically, typically give out. Instead of, uh, instead of doing that, hand out a link. You know, post something onto either a classroom website or onto a classroom blog. And by doing that, you are making um, yourself and your students um, you're, you're making it so that you can uh, ensure that the access is happening online and it's not just in that one single place in your classroom. It is elsewhere and you can um, find uh, you can find those resources again and again. And I can tell you kind of the experience that I had with this. So I started with um, I started with posting my lesson plans and that was actually the biggest thing that changed in my in my own experience was when I started posting these lesson plans online. I every single day would type up a new post on the lesson plan blog and I would say you know core one class one you know, this is the the series of activities that we're gonna do. Here are a couple of links to things that we're gonna look at class two. And I did it all as one post. And it changed the way in which I was looking at, um, at my classroom because every single resource that we were doing, every single activity, I had to reference this online place for. I had to look at it. Um, 
and adapt it between class one and two if something wasn't working or if I realized that I needed to go in a different direction, edited it on the fly, changed it for the second period um, where we were doing that activity or um, changed the link, updated it. And it changed the way in which I started thinking about my own lesson planning. So I guess that's, that's you know, sort of my recommendation is uh, by placing your lesson plans in an online space, it tends to change the way in which you actually end up lesson planning. By placing a single resource, a single handout online, it changes where your students have to go in order to access the information, in order to access the activity. And it changes the orientation from your classroom only being in the physical world to being both in the physical and online world, that blended space where it's happening in both. Now, if I were doing this today, I would probably have a starting point of like Google Classroom or I would have some other very simplified classroom, uh, sort of online uh, classroom tool um, that would allow for me to, to do some differentiation. I might use Blend Space as an easy tool. I might look at uh, the, the ways in which I'm doing assessment um, and I'd probably, you know, use tools like Fluberu and things like that to, to help with doing quick assessment. But I think the biggest thing to, to start your journey is to become a blended learner first. So subscribing to podcasts, reading a couple of, uh, uh, of great blogs. Um, Pernil has a great, great blog that I think is a really good sort of starter place. John Spencer has a really great blog um, that uh, that seems to to help a lot of folks in that place of knowing that they need to to get started on this journey. And then once you sort of are a blended learner, then it is making those small baby steps of how do you become a blended teacher by putting resources online for your students and by lesson planning online and doing it in a public way that both your students and parents and other teachers can access it. So those are my ideas. If you have uh, a question that you would like to have me answer on my way into work, uh, please do use the hashtag AskBenW uh, on Twitter, or uh, you can just comment on one of the videos that's already been uploaded, and I'll uh, try and answer it on my next walk. Thanks a lot. I hope you have a great day.